So we're here at uh, Xilinx, and yeah. uh, who are you? I'm Larry Getman, I'm VP of Corporate Strategy for Xilinx. So um, here you're showing Zinc, and it says, uh, all programmable, is it, this is a robot swarm that's going on right here. So, uh, so what, what, is, what is this? Uh, this is a robot swarm. It's an exhibit uh, which was commissioned for the Museum of Mathematics in New York City. So what do they do? Well, they're meant to teach children about math. Each robot follows a very simple behavior. Uh, and when they act in a group, they will form complex group behaviors. Uh, nice. And you can drive them if you want to yourself. Nice. And why, why are you using Xilinx technology in there? Yeah, so... Can you show the board? Uh, yeah. Hi. Hi. So uh, why do you use uh, Xilinx in there? Um, the image processing pipeline uh, is quite demanding. The camera hits it with 96 megapixels per second that we have to evaluate in real time so that we can extract the uh, coordinate system from the fiducials. So and this is the board right here? Yeah, so this is Which the robot processor. So there's an FPGA on there. There's a system on chip which is a combination of an FPGA fabric and two ARM A9 cores. So dual core Cortex A9 yes. and FPGA. Yes. And then uh, how much do you use the FPGA to do this? You mean how many of the yeah, resources? Yeah, I mean uh, the FPGA is very important to make this work. Yes. Yeah, the entire image processing pipeline is done in the FPGA part. The uh, processing system only does some basic trigonometric functions and some communications protocols. Everything else runs in the fabric. All right, that's cool. So, um, so Xilinx is, uh, are you the leader in FPGA? Yes, we are. Yeah. The world leader? Yeah, we're the world and leader And so, so what's, what's the main purpose of doing the FPGA? Uh, FPGAs have been around for about 30 years now. Um, customers use them a lot for designs where they need um, flexibility, high performance, and really, if there's um, if there's a lot of areas where there's not an ASIC or an ASSP that fits the need, so FPGAs are great for those customers. All right. So you're launching uh, here at the show. You're launching a new. Uh, you call it the ultra scale MP So um, this is this is a 16 nanometer. It's, it's, yeah, it's based on 16 nanometer. What we've done is we've gone from the original Zinc 7000, which you yes. just saw one of the demos for, um, which is based on the dual Cortex A9, and with the next generation we're moving to the Zinc UltraScale Plus and VSOC. So what are we looking at here? So what we're looking at here is what we've done is we've upgraded from dual Cortex A9s to quad uh, Cortex A53s, so 64-bit processors. We've added real-time units with dual Cortex R5s. We've added a graphics processor with ARM Mali, and a lot of features for security, safety, platform management, new DDR. So we really up-leveled quite a bit in the SOC system. So, um, and you have some demos right here, so it's, uh, it's real? Uh, well, what we're showing right now is the silicon's going to be available end of this year. So we're showing on the first demo the platform running on a QEMU model. So in an x86, we're emulating the A53 system as well as the R5. So you can see the, the, no, the A53 is running Linux, SMP Linux. And you have R5, like Cort, uh, Cortex R5, yeah. And this is like microcontroller stuff, Yeah, right? the R5 is designed for real time, as the R implies. So it's um, geared more towards safety and security. Because we found right. security is a big issue with our customers. All right. So, so, hello. so who are you? Hi, uh, so I'm Glenn Steiner, Technical Marketing Manager on the uh, Zinc Solutions, and I'd like to introduce our uh, MPSOC. Uh, we are running uh, it on an emulation platform. So before we produce silicon, we actually take our parts, we implement the full design on, in this case, six of our FPGAs. So this is six of your FPGAs right here? Yes. And you're emulating this SOC that's coming off out there to uh, PC. And, uh, and so what, what are you able to do with this? Uh, so with the six FPGAs, we have the full uh, ARM complex processing system that includes the four A53s, the dual ARM Cortex R5s, as well as the Mali graphics processing unit, all of the interconnect. One of the FPGAs is dedicated to programmable logic uh, so that some of our partners can get a start in doing actual development. 
and partners that are developing their operating systems are able to go and actually run their application. So on this particular demonstration platform, uh, we have booted open source Linux. It is up and running. We're running uh, multiple applications on the uh, ARM uh, Cortex-A53s as well as the R5 demonstrating full functionality. So, so what's the main advantage of doing a... You, now this is 64-bit ARM, um, so this is a higher performance. What, what's, the, what's the market for this? Oh, for the, uh, the A53s versus the A9s? Yeah, so yeah. What, what are you expanding the, to more performance? Yeah, one of the advantages we get with 16 nanometer FinFET is you can get a lot more performance per watt. So we're able to put in quad A53s, um, graphics processing, the R5s at almost the exact same power footprint as the old oh, A9s. Sorry. So All you right. can get a lot more processing at the same power. All right. So uh, so uh, uh, right here, this this is running off this, off there. That's correct. These and uh, what's in each of these windows? Uh, well, we're demonstrating some very simple applications that are running, uh, and honestly, uh, they're just a. a couple of game applications. Uh, however, in the lower left corner, uh, we are showing the Linux top command, where you can see uh, each of the applications running on the different cores. So you can see the uh, CPU yeah. numbers ranging from 0 through 3, depending on the application that's running. In the lower right-hand corner, we are uh, demonstrating the R5s operating. We're actually making use of some built-in self-test capabilities where you can inject an error into the two R5s that are running lockstep. So we inject an error as if there was a lockstep error. That error is then reported out, demonstrating uh, that that functionality is available uh, for, to our customers. So what do you use the R5s for? Uh, R5s are typically used for real-time applications and also safety-critical applications. So it's also about power, also? Sometimes it switches over automatically to the R5? Uh, but it depends on the customer application. There are some customer applications where uh, they have the uh, A53s doing, yeah. uh, let's call it the heavy lifting, yeah. uh, which means they're doing the uh, substantial processing task at various times, uh, depending on the customer application, they may scale back, even turn off the A53s, uh, even power them down, and then leave the R5s operating, doing uh, minimalistic background functions uh, that may be simple human interface. Algorithms. And your customers, it's is easy for them to do that kind of stuff where they choose what to do with what part of the system? Uh, we are delivering a uh, power framework that will allow customers to do that easily, as well as operating systems as, such as Linux do support uh, processor scale. And so your, your uh, differentiator is that you combine this with FPGA and stuff, right? That's a very substantial differentiator. So, for so uh, is it like a new generation FPGA compared to the previous one? Uh, that's a Larry style yeah. question. <laughs> Yeah, the, um, the Ultrascale Plus 16 nanometer is a new generation. It's built on our 20 nanometer Ultrascale architecture. We designed that to be scalable to 16 because we, um, we knew that there'd be a lot of uh, capability that we'd be putting in the 16 nanometer devices. So we wanted to have an architecture that would scale. Um, so it's pretty much a premier, premier FPGA um, uh, architecture. And it's all on one SOC? All on one SOC. One, one piece of silicon. One little square. One, one piece of silicon, yep. And, and uh, it can go in everything. It can go in stuff like this. It can go in stuff like this. It can go into missile systems. It can go into cars. It can go into communication framework. It's a lot of uses. So so what are we, what are we looking at over here? Uh, there's a partner, there's a partner I have on the... Okay. Well, there's a partner I have and they were working with us originally. Sorry? Uh, yeah. They were working with us originally on the Zinc, where they took our emulation platform with the Zinc 7000, they ported Android to it, okay. they had it up and running, and then they turned it into that little port over there. So there's, a, there's Android running right here? There's Android running right there. That's the, um, the Zinc 7000, the existing part yeah. in production now. This is the emulation platform that Glenn showed you earlier that's um, running the MPSOC. And then eventually they'll take this and turn that into a little board like that. And right now it's running at Edge Detect in Android. We can do that. So how often do people run Android with your solutions? Um, we, have, we have quite a mix. We have some that run Android, some that run Wind River. Like, um, like most embedded products, it's, we have a pretty wide view of different OSs. So here we have all kinds of boards. Here at the Zollings booth. So, so who are you? 
So my name is Dave Tokic and I'm responsible for all of Xilinx's third-party partnerships worldwide. And we're very excited about what we're doing here at Embedded World. We have over uh, nearly 50 partners that are demonstrating or showcasing uh, Xilinx products here at the show. So Embedded World well is pretty important for Xilinx. Oh, absolutely. Embedded World is a very important uh, show for us. So and here's all partners showing different stuff? Absolutely. We've got our area around uh, indust Industry 4.0. So it's uh, our solutions through our ecosystem for industrial networking, motor control, and, and applications of those nature. Um, for example, Silicon Software at the far end, uh, showcasing some uh, very cutting-edge motor control applications to uh, Saki over here for industrial uh, automation uh, networking. So people are doing pretty uh, awesome stuff with, the, with your solutions, right? Absolutely. So everything from industrial networking, automotive ADAS, you know, automotive around the corner, doing some really, really interesting uh, image and video processing over there. Um, and as I mentioned, we have a, a very broad range of providers that are doing IP services, software, uh, design tools that help support our customers to uh, design on Xilinx. And let's see uh, some of those boards right here. Sure. Those are those are partners that have booths around the around just Embedded World. Yeah, many of them have booths at Embedded World. Uh, so we have uh, national, national instruments. instruments. Uh, this is very exciting for us. What um, is this? Is a small board yeah. to do. Um, <coughs> smart machine control. Exactly, so National Instruments is well known in uh, many areas, but in this particular case they're doing uh, these, uh, they've just announced this SOM product recently, and so this actually brings them to a small form factor to get to a much broader range of customers. So many of these are using, uh, they're using different Xilinx solutions? Exactly. Most of these boards, though, are using uh, Zinc, our Zinc product. All Which is programmable. an ARM Cortex dual core? Exactly. It's an all programmable SOC combining a dual Cortex uh, ARM A9 with um, FPGA on a single die. And um, we have a multitude of boards here, as I mentioned, the National Insurance one. Knowledge Resources. Doing a demo up front or topic, one of our what, premier what is this uh, one? alliance members. And so this is their Miami yep. SOM on their baseboard. And for example, we have a, uh, a, a new kit that is um, that we're engaging medical customers to do um, clinical uh, applications with. So it says secure communications, aerospace, defense. This is uh, going many different real things. Absolutely. It's yeah. not just like development boards and stuff. No, like these are actually production boards. So while we uh, enjoy a robust uh, group of development boards, really we're seeing a lot of customers are looking for development boards out of the chute. All right. So, and even some bigger boards right here. Yeah, uh, lots of connectors. This is a uh, more of a testing system for okay. uh, automotive driver assistance. And then there's tiny ones. But this is not a. Yeah, what exactly. Is this? So this is actually a miniaturized package for aerospace and, and avionics and events. Uh, that's ruggedized for that application. All right. So, pretty cool board. Uh, with lots of. Uh, and the future is 16 nanometers, ultra scale. So today we actually. Sorry. Yeah. Today we just announced our Ultra Scale uh, Plus, 60 nanometer Ultra Scale Plus family, uh, which includes both uh, our FPGA and MPSOC, or multi-processing SOC. That one in particular includes a quad-core A53 from ARM, Cortex A53, plus dual-core R5s for real-time processing, and the Mali GPU, among uh, other elements. So, and, oh, so with a dual-core A9, and the previous generation, you already had 550 different companies working on different solutions. Well, now it's just going and to yep. and now it's just going to explode even more. Uh, I, potentially. I believe the, with our with our new products, it gives a lot more opportunities to get into many different applications. Uh, the great thing about our new MPSOC, um, Ultra Scale Plus MPSOC, is that really we're amping up our safety and security capabilities within the product, and it's also not meant to replace our previous generation, but augment it into the application. So we have a very robust portfolio from um, the smaller, lower cost, low end applications to very high end applications. So here we have uh, all the partners, many of them. Yes, these are all the partners that are highlighted, um, highlighting Xilinx here at Embedded World. And so it's nearly 50 partners uh, throughout the show. I like to call it Xilinx everywhere at Embedded World. And really it starts uh, at the top. We have many board and module partners and also many embedded software partners here at the show. Uh, one of the things also that we're highlighting is our robust ecosystem of design services partners uh, to allow our customers to accelerate their time to production. And IP cores uh, that allow to integrate 
various functions and capabilities onto our FPGA and SOC products, and also the design tool pro uh, partners that we have today. Cool. So, so anywhere you go in Embedded World, you can find a Xilinx partner. So it's a pretty cool conference. Actually, it's fantastic for us. This is a real showcase for what we can do, and it's a sweet spot.